Ultra League is finally back and today we're diving together into this format with my best teams video. As always, we will cover 4 teams in total, analyzing not only the strongest assets of each individual team, but at the same time the core breakers what you should be afraid of so that you can understand better that individual team and at the same time better the meta, since the meta is gonna be kinda weird and a lot of Pokemon are gonna be participating in in that Ultra League format. So let's see what we have going on for the first team showcase which has already been started uh, to be fair and let's see what is going on over here. So we're starting off with a Tentacruel team up in front that Pokemon is gonna be an immense threat to a lot of options. At the back we have Polarath as a safe switch with the updated moveset being added with that uh, Icy Wind being a very safe one for your Polarath and as a closure we got Sunslash from the Alola region. So this team is very very good. What I like about it is its ability to utilize its capabilities even against the worst possible scenario. And speaking of that scenario, of course, we're gonna have a secure breaker for this team as Swambert. Both our Tentacruel and our Sunslas will most likely get destroyed down by a simple earthquake, but here is the catch. You got Polyrath in between to flip around that very bad matchup and you will, you will be surprised when you're gonna see that even Sunslash can provide a lot of pressure before going down with a double ice punch, with a double drill run or a mix of both. So up in front whenever you are encountering something like a Swambert, I would recommend to stay in because you will be surprised once again when you can apply the debuff first with that skull. So if I were you, I would go for that shield on the earthquake, apply the debuff with the skull if we find of second of course because if you go first and you apply the debuff no reason at all to block the earthquake then you can survive the big move and perhaps right after you can have the upper hand with your tentacruel what i recommend going overall with a tentacruel up in front not up against uh, a swambert but up against something like a mandibus something like a giratina for example is to use your blizzard over any other charge attack doing so tentacruel will emerge victorious against whatever you might encounter and of course it will give you access to more coverage for the entire Ultra League format. Moving up next and we're meeting up with a team that is gonna use two of those pretty good legendaries for Open Ultra League. We're using Red Zero Cup in front at the back Reselia and in between we're gonna fit in there our newly Icy Wind uh, Aboma Snow on its shadow form. If you do not have a shadow feel free to use it and you're gonna be still on the correct path but I believe that as a closer with this exact team that you already have a decent bulk on your arsenal, I think that the Shadow Bomber Snow will fit much better as a solid damage output as well. Feel free to use whatever moveset you want on Red Zero, but I recommend going for Stone Edge no matter what, while Focus Blast can be your second charge attack. Some people tend to use Zap Cannon, some people tend to use the Legacy Earthquake, but I think that Focus Blast is gonna help you much more, and especially against something like an Obstacle, for example that your Aboma Snow is also being afraid of. So with this team composition you are mainly afraid of those fighters and only one fighter can beat down even your Cresselia and that is Cobalion. So this is why I have here Cobalion as a core breaker because individually it can finish off any of our Pokemon over here. So now it is more clear than ever as to why you definitely need that Focus Blast or Earthquake on your Regirock in order to protect uh, yourself from from that still typing of Cobalion. So with that said now let's move forward into the strategy that you need to follow because what you need to do with this individual team is to go ahead and aggressively switch in there to your Cresselia to try and draw out either a Town Flame or a Charizard to protect further your uh, Boma Snow and right after finish it off either with your Cresselia surprising them with a future sight or just return to the battle at some point with a simple, simple Stone Edge and your Regirock. So with Cresselia coming in as a safe switch, obviously you're gonna need that future sight since you want to draw out that Talonflame or the Charizard, but I believe that as your second charge attack you do not have to go for Grass Knot. Instead you can always use Moonblast and you are still gonna be fine even against those Swamberts. And yeah, the backline can protect your Regirock from those Swamberts. So the synergy is there, it is only up to you to grab it and make it your own. 
Up next we have an Aurorus team followed up by Jellicent and Virision. I want to start though from the core breaker of this team because we just saw that uh, Cresselia is an amazing safe pick on the previous team showcase and right here it makes no difference at all but we are gonna see it and meet it up as a core breaker. This Pokemon with Grass Knot can eventually finish off our Aurorus while it has kind of a very close matchup against our Jellicent and of course the Moon Blast or the future side can do tremendous amount of damage on our fighting type. It doesn't matter though because Cresselia doesn't have the best attack stat possible which means that we can take advantage of that, survive at least one move and answer back at them with some heavy hitting moves like Meteor Beam and Shadow Ball. So with that in mind I would not be that much worried about Cresselia but I would be worried about how to play a fighting lead because all you have to do with this team is to switch out and rotate around your Jellicent. Bringing that Pokemon into play makes me think that uh, they are gonna have uh, the upper hand uh, at uh, the early battle but at the end game not so much because you still have Virision which can finish off that Polyrath with a couple of those Leaf Plates and you can always outspeed to that move. Eventually your Aurorus will be extremely useful as well so do not delete it yet from that battle. Perhaps not against Polyrath but still you're gonna see that that Aurorus has so much play on the entire Ultra League meta, able to do solid damage on those flyers, has the amazing ice moves to destroy down that uh, Giratina and any other Dragon type, while Meteor Beam will help you along the way against neutral matchups and of course vamping up your attack stat and Aurorus is definitely gonna be benefiting from that element. Also just remember that this is Ultra League after all and even super effective moves can easily be taken at least once so with that in mind I believe you are not gonna be in a pickle when using a Pokemon like Aurorus with Powder Snow and Weather Ball. So this team is looking very strong but another note that I want to share with you before getting out of this team showcase is to use Leaf Blade and Sacred Sword on your Virision. If you feel like you have to use something like a Stone Edge feel free to use it but do not replace Leaf Blade just uh, replace Sacred Sword and and your opponent will also will not expect that at all. You still have double kick for fighting moves, so it is not the best offensive move, but still it is gonna get you some decent outcomes. And of course, by sacrificing Sacred Sword, you get access to Stones, which can help you against the Flyers, against a uh, neutral opponent, something like a Dragon type, for example. And of course, in general, it does more damage to Giratina, which is pretty great. Join me now into the final team showcase of this video, and we're gonna use a triple legendary team that I believe has no weakness at all other than Trevenant. So with that in mind are you gonna see a lot of Trevenants around? I do not think so but still they are gonna be there. So by taking advantage of your Moonblast, your Double Zap Cannon or a simple Shadow Force, yeah you can always use Shadow Sneak if you want to but I have a Shadow Force here which is Legacy that's why I'm using it. You can still overcome the obstacle of that Trevenant. So yeah that is gonna be all about the Core Breaker. Now let's talk about the team because we're looking at a team that gets full coverage against the meta you got your Registeel, your Tapu Fini, your uh, Giratina and both the elite Pokemon with the safe switch can protect your Metal Trascan from those fire moves which is pretty great and of course you can get even more coverage with uh, that uh, uh, Swampert threat with that same core. So yeah Registeel is just gonna be in a sandwich team here able to protect it from its natural threats. Also I really like how well you can manipulate your opponents here with those charge attacks to draw those shields out of play so that eventually you're gonna land a few nooks to guarantee those knockouts. So that is gonna be all for today trainers, thank you for watching and for staying till the end. I hope you had a nice time watching the video and at this point I want to announce to you that I'm having my videos being uploaded much earlier than usual uh, because YouTube now gives us the choice to upload to members first so if you want to have early access on my videos feel free to become a member and this way you can have your name being popped up on the end 
screen of each of my videos and at the same time you get to support me even more by just uh, becoming a member which is pretty great so that is gonna be all for today thank you once again so much for watching be sure to leave a like before you go subscribe to the channel if you are new to my content it really helps the channel grow and with that said i have two videos over here for you to check out feel free to check them out and i will catch you up later into the next one